I'm Tom Anderson, and this is part 7 of my simulation series, Simulating a KiCad Schematic. And under Tools, I can generate a netlist file. And one of the options is going to be a spice netlist. Uh, this sounds like a good idea. And I'm not going to run the simulator directly from KiCad, so I'll leave that out. So I'm going to generate, oh, there's a spot to add a plugin. I could see why you would need one. So generate, and then rc.cir, that's a nice name. So I save that. And now I can go back to my command line, see what's involved with getting this to actually run. So there are my files. Let's see what it put into rc.cir. I know I'm going to have to edit it, so I'm going to actually copy this to rc.cki. That's my favorite way to abbreviate a uh, spice netlist. rc.cki. And I see a bunch of stuff in there, a little bit of junk. So I have a, a title and it starts with an asterisk. That's nice. I think I want it to just say rc filter. And now it's telling me some informational things. I can exclude a component that's on the schematic from the spice netlist by adding a property and setting it to a value. Uh, and then there's also this node sequence, which is a uh, in case the the spice nets when they come out in here they could be in the wrong order. And some of these some polarized parts require the nets to be in a specific order. And so if that order doesn't match what the netlister does then this property gives you a, an opportunity to rearrange the nets. An example would be a bipolar transistor needs to go collector base emitter for the three terminals in this in a in the spice deck. If that if it didn't happen to come out collector base emitter, you could change this sequence and and fix that. Uh, for this design, I don't need either one of those. There's the sheet name. If I had multiple sheets, it would have little sections in it uh, with with the sheet name and then the section of circuitry. There's some weird white space issues. There's extra space. I'm going to get rid of those. There's some spaces at the end of the line. I, I don't like those. I'm a little bit picky about what goes in my netless. And remember, I had to turn this into a one. Uh, you get a really weird answer if you forget and leave that in. Spice doesn't really notice it, but you don't get it an ace. It doesn't do what you want. Now here's a really bad one uh, to forget. In AC analysis, it actually probably works, um, but when you go to switch to a transient response, you'll get a really weird answer if you have no ground net. So it's something you have to really watch out for is that you actually use net zero as your global ground. And I still don't have a spot for my AC analysis, so I'm going to add a dot .ac. I'm going to do a log frequency sweep because they're pretty. So I like decade logs, 41 points per decade from 10 hertz to 100 kilohertz. And so this is sort of my, my minimized spice net list. So now that I have that in my CKI file, set my spice... ASCII raw file equals one. So I'll type ng spice minus b because I'm in batch mode. I'm not in an interactive mode. I wanted to just simulate minus r, and then the file is going to be called rc dot raw, and then the input deck is rc dot cki. So now I can run ng nutmeg on the raw file, which is rc.raw, and I should be able to plot vdb of v out. And there it is. So this looks pretty good. Uh, I can resize the plot, make it prettier, and it looks nice. There's my nice 20 dB per decade. And I can quit out of the post processor with the quit command.